So good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, and to all our guests, welcome to Lightcast Mission Center. Um, as uh, Deacon Jonathan said, I am Jake Ramos. I am the newly appointed assistant pastor of Lightcast Mission Center. And you know, it's, um, I'm still getting used to it. Uh, I'm still getting used to, to being called pastor because whenever people come up to me and they say, hi, hi, pastor. You know, I, I look around and I wonder, like, who, who are you talking to? <laughs> oh, then I realize, oh, it's me. It's me. You're talking to me. So, so yeah, it, 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 you know, it's still, um, it's still sinking in. But, but praise God. Praise God for this journey. You know, I've, I've been with the, with the church for a very long time. Actually, since the beginning of Lightcast. And... If you were to include all the years before we became Lightcast, you know, I, I, I was there too when I was a uh, very, very young. Um, I actually started in the church before we were called Lightcast. You know, I was in the church since I was eight years old. That was back in 1993. So can you imagine how long it's been? But praise God, you know, for that journey um, from starting that young, growing up in the church and to eventually being an intern. I interned for the church when I was in college, and then eventually a church staff, ministry leader, church planter, and now pastor. So praise God, praise God indeed. And thank all of you for those who have been supporting, supporting me and praying for me through all, throughout all of those years. So praise God. Let's go, to, let's go to God in prayer. Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you, Father God, for this day. Thank you, Father God, for this morning. And Lord, uh, thank you, Lord, for this privilege to deliver your word this morning, Father God. And I pray that you will speak through me, uh, speak your word through me, Father God, and open the hearts and minds of your people today to receive your word. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Back in the 80s, there was this movie that came out, and um, it was about this young man who traveled back in time in 1955. So he traveled back in time in 1955 through a time machine made out of a DeLorean. For those of you who don't know what a DeLorean is, it's a, it's a car in the 80s that, that looks very futuristic. It was known for its doors opening. When it opens up, it looks like wings. So it was one of those cool cars back in the 80s. And so this kid, he went back in time from 1985 to 1955. And there, he met his parents, who were still young at the time. They were still in high school. And his presence there kind of altered the path of where his parents were going to go. His parents were supposed to meet, but his presence there altered that. So his parents didn't meet yet. And his goal was to bring them together so that they can fall in love so that his existence back in the present day, 1985, would still be there. Because if his parents don't meet and fall in love, then he wouldn't exist in the future. And so that was his goal, to bring them together. And then, of course, this movie is Back to the Future. You know, one of my favorite movies that came out in 1985, same year I was born. But... Not only did this movie make the DeLorean look cool, but it also gave us, it also, uh, gave us a, a hit song in the 80s called The Power of Love. And that song is by Huey Lewis and the News. And I'm going to read a line, I'm going to read a couple of lines from the song that kind of stood out to me. And these lines are, li and these are lines that describe what love is. And the song goes... The power of love is a curious thing. Make a one man weep, make another man sing. It's tougher than diamonds, it's rich like cream. Make a bad one good, make a wrong one right. It's strong and it's sudden, and it's cruel sometimes. Now here's the line that stood out the most to me. But it might just save your life. That's the power of love. And that's the title of our message today, The Power of Love. Now, the song is about the importance of love and its ability to make the world go round. 
But of course, this description of love is coming from a human perspective. But don't you know that love goes beyond emotion and feeling? It's more than just a four-letter word that, that we say to others to express our affection for them. You see, love is an action. And that act of love can save your life. When you love someone, when you truly love them, you'll do anything for them. Even if it means making sacrifices. Even if it means putting your life on the line. And the main character of Back to the Future, his name is Marty McFly. And uh, he risked everything to make sure that his parents would meet and fall in love so that he has a future to go back to. That's the power of love, making sacrifices to save others. And that's the kind of love that God has given us. Do you believe that God loves you? Amen. I strongly believe that God loves me, even though I'm not perfect and I make mistakes. I don't deserve God's love, but I truly believe that God loves me. Now, maybe there's some of you who might feel a little different. You, you might ask the question, does God, does God truly love me? Maybe you're struggling with that idea that God loves you because you're going through something. Maybe you're going through some challenges. If God loves me so much, why am I struggling? Why am I in pain? Why do bad things happen to me? I can't answer that question. I can't answer those questions for you. But no matter what you are feeling, I believe that God truly does love you and he has a great plan for you. And I believe that God's love is powerful. It's relentless, it's unstoppable, and it's constant. Our main passage today is John 3, 16. And we all know this, we've heard this before. It's one of the most quoted, it's one of the most famous verses in the Bible. We've heard it in Sunday school, we, we've heard it when we were young. It's all over. John 3, 16. And at the heart of this verse is the gospel and the subject line of the entire Bible. This verse clearly explains the gravity and extent of how much God loves us. Now let's take a look at this verse again. It says here, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Again, we've heard this all before. We've heard this verse many times. But do we really understand it? So we're going to break this verse down so that we can truly understand what this all means. So the first part of this verse, it says, For God so loved the world. And as I stated earlier, God loves you and me. It says here, for God so loved the world. We are created and formed in the image of God. He is our creator. He is our father. And just like any good father, he loves his children. So therefore, we have a relationship with him. Any good and healthy relationship always involves some form of love whether it's love among family members, among siblings, among friends, intimate and romantic love between husband and wife, or the kind of love that shows compassion towards those who are in need. You see, the world defines love in this way. Love is a set of emotions and behaviors characterized by intimacy. Passion and commitment it involves care, Closeness, protectiveness, attraction, affection, and trust. But what the world doesn't tell you is that this kind of love, this worldly love, although it may seem good, with good intentions, it will eventually fail. Worldly love will eventually fail. What started out as something good can lead to something bad. 
You see, love was, in, love was involved, but that kind of love would eventually fail. Now, why does love, as defined by the world, fail? It is because of sin. Sin is what separates us from the love of God. Sin is a word the Lord chose to describe an action that misses the mark, his mark. God is perfect, and sin is anything that deviates from his expressed will and desire. The Bible describes sin in this way in James 4, 17. And it says here, Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. And in Mark 7, verses 20 to 23, it says, And he said, What comes out of a man that defiles a man? For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. The Bible makes it very clear. You see, sin is anything that goes against the original design of the Lord. God created us, he loves us, and he wants to have a relationship with us and live in harmony with him. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve fell into temptation and sin entered this world and into the hearts of men. And because of that, we have separated from God. And because of that, we have been separated from his love and sin will lead us to our destruction. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now most of us believe that we are good people. That we could win God's favor if we perform certain religious acts to counterbalance our bad deeds. But the Bible clearly states that we are all condemned. There is no one righteous, not even one, as stated in Romans 3.10. However, there is hope. There is hope. You see, God offers us a way out from our path of destruction. For God so loved the world. You see, when, you, when the word so is placed before the word love, it puts a stronger emphasis on the word love. The Lord's love towards his children is relentless. It's unconditional. The ancient Greek word for it is agape, which means a profound sacrificial love that transcends and persists regardless of circumstance. You see, God, God's love is absolute and not subject to any special terms or conditions. It'll happen no matter what else happens. He loves us regardless of what we have done. In the story of the prodigal son, the son demands to have his father's riches. And then he leaves home and spends all his inheritance. He spent it all away to the point where he had none left. And then... One day he found himself homeless and eating from inside a pig pen. And he realized that he needs to go back to his father, where he has shelter, where he has food and clothing. And he wants to ask his father for forgiveness. So when he made his way back home, the father welcomed him with open arms and threw him a big feast because the son who was once lost was now found. The father loves the prodigal son even though the son disrespected him and forsaken him 
And regardless of what the son did, the father's love never failed. And that is the kind of love that the Lord has for us. He loves the world so much, which means all of mankind. God is love and God is perfect. And therefore, the love God has for us will never, ever fail. Amen. And he showed and expressed that love in the next part of this verse. What did God do? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. Jesus is the son of God and he is God in the flesh. God's love towards us is relentless. It's powerful and unconditional. It's agape love. And he loved the world in this way that he was willing to give his son to the world. And what did Jesus do for the world? He died for us. He died for you and for me. Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We do not deserve the kind of love that God gives us. Why? Because of sin. We're sinners. But yet Christ died for us. He took our place on the cross. And it should have been us. It should have been us that was crucified because of our sins. We deserve death. Not love. But again, the love of God is powerful. The love of God is relentless. It's unconditional and so much more that we could ever imagine. He was willing to sacrifice his own son on the cross. Christ suffered a horrible and painful death. He was whipped. He was beaten to a pulp. And he was forced to wear a crown of thorns and dragged his own cross to Calvary. His hands and feet pierced with the nails that mounted him on the cross and he struggled to breathe as he hung up there on the cross, sweating blood, the agony, the pain, and finally breathed his last breath. After the crucifixion, he was laid to rest inside a tomb, but on the third day, Christ was risen from the dead. Through his resurrection, death and sin have been conquered, and we have been forgiven and redeemed. He cleanses the guilt of our past and assures us of a safe and secure future. Christ became the bridge that fills the gap between us and God. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. It is only through Jesus, God's one and only Son, that we have salvation, and the only way to get to heaven. It's not through our good works or good behavior. Anyone can be good. Anyone can be at their best behavior. You can donate to charity, feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, and help those who are in need, but it will never be enough because of sin, we will eventually fail at being good. Even though I've been with the church for a long time, I'm a church planter, and now a pastor, no matter how long I've been serving the Lord, I'm not good. I will never be perfect. I fail many times. I have evil thoughts, I'm impatient, I'm easily angered, and I say things that are hurtful sometimes, just to name a few. <laughs> but I'm sure we are all guilty of that. You see, the Bible says in Psalm 14.3, they have all turned aside. They have together become corrupt. 
There is none who does good. No, not one. So no amount of good that I will ever do will ever measure to the standard of God. And it will never be enough to get to heaven. And so the question is, what should I do? What shall we all do? And that leads us to the next part of this verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And here it says that whoever, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We are all sinners. And the first step to salvation is to repent of our sins. To repent is to admit that we have done wrong and we make a 180 degree turn from our former life and head towards a life transformed by Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Believe that he is the only way, that he is the truth and that he is the life. Believe that he is the savior of your life and trust in him and accept him into your heart as Lord and Savior. You see, the life offered to those who believe in Christ is eternal. And the alternative to life in Christ is destruction. There is so much evil in this world. You know, we see it all the time in the news, in the headlines. There's war. There's people turning on each other. People turning on each other because they have different views and different beliefs, people confused about things. And without Christ in our lives, we're going to get caught up in all this chaos, and it will lead us to our destruction. And there's no question that according to the Bible and this verse, John 3, 16, people can be saved only through faith in Jesus. See, believing in Jesus, it means that you acknowledge him as your savior and the Lord of your life. When you put your faith in Jesus, you are putting your trust in him. You are letting go of your old self, forsaking your past life, and allowing Jesus to guide your life and direction. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Going back to the beginning, God created this world and the universe, and he saw that it was good. His love, his creation, he loves his creation. He loves you and me. But sin entered this world, and because of that, mankind was separated from his love. In Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The payment or wages of sin is death. Now, I don't just mean death here on earth, but an eternal death. Hell is real. And I don't wish that upon anyone, including myself. But the good news is that there is hope. The good news is that God has given us a free gift. And it's not something that we have to work for, but it's given to us free of charge. You know, it's like, it's like receiving a gift on Christmas or on your birthday. When you receive that gift, do you have to pay that person to receive that gift? No, of course not. You just simply receive it. And that person gave you that gift because they care about you, because they love you, because they're thinking of you, and they want to show that they care. And so that, that is what the Lord had done for us, that free gift of salvation through Jesus. Eternal life can be yours today, a life of abundance 
can be yours today. And I'm not going to tell you that if you believe in Christ, that if you accept him today, that all your problems will go away. Because it won't. Problems and conflict will always come in this life while we are here on earth. And that's because of sin. But I can promise you that you will experience peace and you will experience joy and you will have freedom from shame, from guilt, and the bondage of sin. You will not live a sinless life, but because of Jesus in your life, you will sin less. And all you need to do is accept the free gift of God. You see, God loves you so much. Love is what brought us all here today. Because someone, because someone loves you and cared enough to invite you here today. Because someone loves you and cared enough to share with you about Jesus. See, I am a product of that love. Because back when I was young, my mom loved me so much that she shared with me about Jesus. You know, every night before going to bed, my mom would read me a story from the Bible. And afterwards, she would pray, and then I would go to bed. I would go to sleep. But then one night, one night my mom shared with me about Jesus. Not only did she tell me a Bible story, but she shared with me about Jesus. And I received the free gift of God that night. But just because I have Jesus in my life, growing up, my life wasn't always perfect. I had a rough childhood. Eventually, my parents divorced. My family was broken. And even my relationship with my family was also broken at the time. And I made a lot of mistakes. I grew up in church, but I made a lot of mistakes. I was going through a depression. I even turned my back on my family, and I turned my back from God for a time. But God was not through with me. God was not through with me. Because God has a greater plan for me. And I thank God for saving me. If God can take a person like me, who was broken, who came from a broken family, who made so many mistakes and turned my back from him, but instead he still saved me and he still forgave me of my sins, then God can do the same for you. Salvation can be yours today. The Lord can free you from your past. Accept the free God. Accept the free gift of God today. And that's something that you desire, something that you long for, and you want peace, joy, and freedom in your life, then I urge you, I urge you to follow me in this prayer. And it's not my prayer that is going to save you, but it is salvation in Jesus. It is the decision to accept Christ into your heart. So I invite everyone to close your eyes and bow your heads. And no one looking around. And let's take this time to be still. Let's humble ourselves before the Lord. If your desire is yes, yes, I want to receive the free gift of God today then follow me, follow me in this prayer. And when you pray this prayer, pray it out loud and just say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I recognize that I am a sinner and I ask for forgiveness. I believe that you died on the cross and rose again to save me from my sins. Thank you for loving me. And I accept you 
into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Transform my life for the better and direct my path. In Jesus' name, amen. If you truly prayed that prayer today and really believed in your heart, then I want to congratulate you and welcome you to the family of God. This is the first step. This is the first step in a life transformed by Jesus. But now, I want you to take another step. If you have prayed that prayer today, I want you to raise your hand. If you pray that prayer today, I want you all to raise your hand. And I want to recognize you today. But now, the next step is this, and, and this requires courage. I want you all to, if you pray that prayer today, I want you to get up out of your seat and come forward, and we're going to pray for you. Just come forward and get out of your seat, and we'll pray for you. If someone invited you today, then that person who invited you, I invite them to come here and stand with you here as well. And we're going to pray for all of you. Don't be shy. Just come forward. And we're going to pray for you today. You know, it takes a lot of courage. You know, it takes a lot of courage to stand up here. You being here is not an accident. And I thank God that you are here today because God loves you. And he has a great plan for all of you. As believers in Christ, we can experience transformation through encounters with Jesus. When we surrender our lives to him and receive his grace and power, we can become faithful and bold disciples who make a difference in this world. Now, as you start your new journey in Christ today, there are some steps that we can take so that you can grow in your faith as true believers in Christ. You know, here in Lightcast, we have what we call cell groups. These are smaller groups within the church that you can be a part of. And these range from different ages, from young people all the way to the seniors. And we have many cell groups. And I invite you to join one of our many cell groups because there you will grow in your faith with other people where others will help you. You know, in our cell groups, we we help build each other up. We encourage one another. If someone is struggling within the group, the others are there to help you. Next, I encourage you to go to God's Word daily. You know, take a few minutes of your day going to God's Word, reading His Word, praying to God. I know we're all busy with work, with school, with responsibilities, taking care of people, taking care of our responsibilities, but go to God's Word each and every day. Pray to God. Speak to Him, and He will reveal to you His plans. Next, be a part of a bigger community of believers, the church, where we come together and build lives together. So you see, the church is not a building. It's the people. And we're not meant to do this alone. We're meant to do this together, to grow in our faith in the Lord. And so I encourage you to become a part of the church where we can grow together in our faith and glorify God and build one another up. And then next is tell everyone about Jesus. What the Lord had done for you today, tell that to everyone. Tell them about Jesus because it doesn't end with you. It doesn't end with you. What you have heard today, be a witness to others of the goodness of God in your life. Let me pray for all of you. Lord, Father God, we just want to thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for those who have committed their lives to you today. And Lord, welcome them into your family. Lord, we welcome them into the family of God. 
Lord, continue to work in their lives. Continue, Father God, to reveal to them, Father God, to speak to them, reveal to them, Father God, your plan and your purpose for them. And Lord, this is just the beginning of their new life in Christ. And so, Lord, I pray that you will continue to guide them, that you will continue to direct their path, Father God. And Lord, help them, Lord, any struggles, any challenges that they may face, Lord. May they have the assurance that you never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, I pray for peace. I pray for blessings. And I pray, Father God, for protection. Lord, be with everyone here today, Father God. And Lord, I pray that you will continue to show them your love and that love they will share with others. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your love and for loving us. And all these things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people say, amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you.